So it's lesson four, part two, and we've played around a little bit with Express. I've uploaded our simple example, but now we're gonna try out this application generator tool, the Express generator. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna get out of my lesson. So if your server's still running, you'll wanna stop it with control C in your command prompt. So we wanna get back to our terminal because we're gonna need to use the terminal to run some commands. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is leave this folder. I want to go up one folder in my folder tree. So I'm going to just type cd dot, whoops, cd dot dot. So this takes me back to my main folder with all my WebStorm projects. It doesn't really matter what folder you're in on the computer. We just want to get out of the lesson for Express Basic project. Clear out my terminal here so we can see a little better. So what we want to do here is we want to install the Express Generator globally. I'm going to run npm i express-generator minus g. I know it can be a little hard to see. I'll put the command in the chat window as well. It's going to be npmi express generator minus g. So let's run that command. So now we have the tool installed and we can use this tool to build these new express applications. So you're going to use it in your assignment and we're going to use it in the project we're going to build. Um, now, we should probably decide. I know we've been we've been building a number of individual projects so far each week. It's not my favorite way to run the course. For those of you who we've had ASP.NET together, you know, in that course, we basically picked one project and we built that project out through the rest of the course. So that's kind of what I would like to do is to create a project that we can keep working on week after week. So before we set that project up, this project up, um, why don't we talk about what, what do you guys want to build? <laughs> doesn't really matter to me. It just has to be something where eventually we can do create, read, update, and delete operations. So what kind of website? I'm open to suggestions. Use the chat. Okay. <laughs> Liquor store. Okay, that could be in the running. Yes. Great minds or corrupt minds think alike, I don't know. Any other suggestions besides a liquor store? Computer store, yeah, it doesn't even have to be a store. As long as we can do create, read, update, and delete, it doesn't even have to be a store. Yeah, it could be a music library. All right, let's, could be a homework tracker. Could be the useful NPM's plugin. Okay. Uh, I like democracy as much as the next person. Okay. Bear with me and we'll, uh, let's see. Okay, so our web app could be about alcohol. Um, it could be music library. It could be homework tracker. It could be um, NPM plugins. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the liquors, that's true. A lot of you were in, we already did. A liquor store, so I'll maybe exclude that one because about half of you were in that class with me this summer. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Okay, so. Um, let me just activate this, clear the responses. Okay, so you can go to 
bullyv.com slash Rich Freeman 521. So what should we build here? Okay, so it lo it's looking like the music library uh, is probably our most popular option. Okay. So I think we'll go with the music library. Um, okay. Don't we all, Raymond? So how do we create this? So we can, now that we've installed the Express Generator, we're gonna create it this way. We're gonna type the command Express. Let's see, I'm gonna call it, uh, why don't we call it Node Tunes? This puppy is driving me insane. She scratches at the door, I let her out, and two seconds later, she's back scratching to come back in. So we're gonna run express node tunes, but now we need minus minus view equals HBS. I know it's hard to see in the terminal, I'll copy it. So if we don't specify the view engine, the generator is going to use the pug view engine instead, and we don't want that. Pug I found is just I find it's really hard to debug. So we're gonna use HBS or handlebars instead. So this is going to create a, a folder called node tunes, and then it's gonna create this project structure. This project structure is gonna get created inside of it. So let's run that command. So that happens pretty quickly. It says it's created all these things. And now it wants us to change directories to go into our new node tunes and then run npm install to install all the dependencies. So I'll just show you what this kind of looks like. So here's my node tunes folder. Notice there is no node modules yet. If I open up the package.json, right, there are a bunch of dependencies we need, but they are not included yet. We don't yet have node modules. So I'm going to follow these prompts. I'm going to run cd node tunes. And then I'm going to run npm install. So this is now gonna read package.json. It's gonna view all of these dependencies and download them to the node modules folder. So run cd node tunes and then npm install. Bugra, um, were you able to install the generator successfully? Okay, um, maybe you could provide, maybe send me a screenshot. We'll need a little more info about that error to know exactly what's crashing. So if I go back to my directory now in Windows, you'll notice now I've got the node modules folder with 63 dependencies. Well, uh, maybe not right this minute. I will try to help you, but I, I'm trying to balance <laughs> everything out. I may have to look at it after we're done and 
you know, can use the video to catch up later, potentially. Try to run the command again. And notice, I'm just going to point out, so it's express, node tuned, and then minus minus view equals HBS. So there are two symbols here, not just one. So now all the dependencies are installed. Now notice it also says that some of these have some security vulnerabilities and it recommends we run the command npm audit fix, which I'm going to do. So that will update a few of the dependencies to newer versions. So npm audit fix, I'm gonna run that as well. You can see it right at the bottom of my screen. I've also put it in the chat. So now it says that this update fixed. It removed one package we don't really need and it's updated four other ones. So now it says there are no vulnerabilities here. So now in my code editor up here, I'm still, we've still got the Lesson 4 Express basic project open. I want to close this. I want to open up now our Node Tunes project. So I'm going to click File Open. And go to my WebStorm projects. And I want to open up the Node Tunes project that we've created. So we're going to work with this project. I'm going to choose it in this window. So this is the project we're going to work with moving forward for the next at least couple of months. So we can see what Express gives us. So here's our package.json file. Here's our app.js. This is kind of like the central file here. So it links to all of our dependencies like Express, Morgan for logging, um, it uses a cookie parser, and we can see okay, um, we all the commands are actually in the chat. So you were able to create the project. Okay, so once you created the project, you're going to run two commands. You're going to run cd node tunes. Right? So that you're then going inside of your new project directory. And then you just run npm install. So that all of the dependencies listed in package.json get installed into node modules. And then you can just open up the project in your code editor. Okay, all right, great. So you'll notice a few things here in app.js that look kind of familiar to what we did. So we're instantiating the Express app here. The view engine is set as HBS. We'll look at that in a little more detail. And then we've got some routing, right? We've got app.use. So when we have a request at the root, we're passing it to an index router variable. And if we scroll up here, the index router is represented by this file, roots slash index. If we have requests that start with slash users, those requests are handled by our users router variable that points to the root users file. Got some 404 handling. We've also got this at the bottom, which is important. We'll talk about this. The export keyword in Node and Express, what this means is make this file public. So exporting it makes something public. So let's take a look at these roots. In index, again, we're using Express. 
And we're also instantiating an instance of an express router object. So when we have a get request at our root, we've now got a callback function with request and response. So this looks fairly similar to what we've already done. What do you suppose is happening here? This output, this response, it's, a, it's similar to what we've done, but not exactly the same. What's happening on line six in this auto-generated code? Res.render index title express. Let's translate this to English. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Chris. It's loading a view. So the name of the view is index. And what's this doing? We've got this little JSON object here. What's this JSON object that says title express? Yeah, it's passing in a parameter called title within giving it a value of express. So this is how we load a view from a controller method. This is kind of the equivalent, I'll put it in the chat, right? In ASP.NET, our controller methods would have this statement that said return view. So the note, the express equivalent is our response.render. And then we provide the name of the view. And then this file is public, it's global in the application with it being exported. If we go and look, so this method calls our index view, which we find under views and index.hbs. So this syntax is probably new, but it should be fairly clear. What's, what do you suppose these double angled brackets on line one and two, what do they represent? Why is the word title? Yeah, it is a variable. Correct. So where is the variable coming from? We're displaying it here. Where is the variable created and assigned a value? Yes, Ruger, you're right. It is a JSON object key. Uh, good guess, Adam. It's not actually an app.js. So where is this title variable created and populated? Yep, right, and it's in the root, you got it. So which file under roots? Exactly, so under roots and index, right here. In our res.render statement, not only are we specifying what view to load, but we're also creating a variable called title and assigning it a value. So whatever value is populated here in this, Burger, as you mentioned, in this JSON object, we can now access that server-side value in our view, in our front end. And these, so what do these double angled brackets represent then? Whenever you see these in a view, what do they represent? Um, close, Adam. Anybody else want to take a guess? Exactly, Reden. It's a server-side value. So in Razor syntax in ASP.NET, we would just prefix title with an at symbol. So this is the handlebars equivalent. And you can probably see why this syntax is called handlebars, because these look like two handles that you could grab onto this way. It's, so it's called handlebars, or even it's also sometimes called mustache syntax. Looks like a mustache on its side with the double curly braces. So the reason we chose handlebars as our templating is when we get to Angular, Angular represents server-side values in the same syntax. 
it uses those double angled brackets. So if we get used to using this syntax in our views now, it's easy to transition to Angular later. Um, and I can even show you an example from previous semester. Why don't I? Let's see. Uh, I didn't even put the right course code. I'm sorry. That should be Comp 2068. So when we get to using Angular, so in this class, we built a food site. So we can see wrapped around any server side values, we see that same handlebars or mustache syntax. So the double angled brackets, both opening and closing around any of our server side values. So we've got a public folder. We've got folders here for images and JavaScripts. We even have a little style sheet that we can customize, change fonts, add colors. So we can actually run this project using NodeMon. Let's see what we get. So I'm in the root of my NodeTunes folder here in my terminal. So I can just run the NodeMon command. It starts our project, and we can just go to our familiar URL with Express, a node of localhost 3000. So this calls our index controller, our index root. It renders the index view, and this title gets rendered. Bring this down. So in our index, right, our title variable gets printed twice, once in an H1 and once, so here's the H1 and here's the paragraph tag. Constantly got to get in and out of my chair. Not as young as I used to be. So let's try changing this a little bit. So we haven't made any changes. This is what the generator gives us. Now notice also, there were two URLs mapped, right? There's the root path in app.js. There's also this users path. Let's try that URL as well and see what happens there. So if we append on to the end of our URL slash users, we get this response, respond with a resource. So let's go and check our users root. So again, we've got a similar links, right? We're depending on Express, we're creating an Express router. And at the root path, when we get a request, this is just sending a plain text response, it just says respond with a resource. And again, this file is public. I'll show you what happens. I do want to show you why this ex module.exports is important. I'm going to comment it out for a minute. So I'm just going to comment save. So I've disabled. So I have this user's route with this request response, but my file is not public. And now you notice when I save, not only that, but it, it actually crashes. The server crashes. Because on app.js, right, our user's router here is trying to point to this file. If it's not public, the app.js can't see it. So this, it crashes here. It's trying to 
reference this user's router, but with the, the file is no longer public. So our site, we've taken the server offline. It's crashed. So our controller files, right, when I put it back, my server will restart. And we're back online. So it works a little different in, in languages like Java or in .NET. We might create a class, and we create that class at the top of the file, and we declare the class as public, for example, so then it's visible to other files. Node does the opposite. This export typically comes at the end of the file. All the code is in here, and then we export it down at the bottom. So we see that in our users route. We see it in our index route. And same in our app.js, it's the very last thing is our app is public. So we've got our, this is kind of like our template, our right out of the box express file. Let's make some changes to it. Let's start to customize it and build it as our own. Now, the first thing I want to change, because I don't like very much, this isn't required, it's just a preference, is I don't like this folder name over here called Roots. I find it's very confusing. To me, Roots are about you mapping URLs. What these files actually are, index and users, these are controllers, because we are using the MVC pattern. So I prefer that this folder, I want to refactor it. I want to rename it from roots to controllers. This is an optional step, but I find it makes things more clear. So I'm going to right click my roots folder. I'm going to refactor it and I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to change roots to controllers. And then I also want my code editor to search for references because it's going to update a few of the paths in the project. So I'm going to click on refactor here. And now notice on my app.js, it's also updated the paths on lines seven and eight. So these default paths that said routes and controllers. Now, it said my app crashed. I may need to stop. Okay, it's restarting now. So now it's working again. Okay. So that step was optional, but I find it makes, to me, it's just a lot clearer that these are controllers. So I'm renaming that folder and changing the paths here. The next thing we want to try changing is this title, right? Our homepage says we see the word express in three places. It shows up here in the page title. It's in this H1 and it's also in our paragraph. We don't want to call our site is not called express. So we, I want to change the value. So in our index controller, I want to change the value on line six, where it's assigning the title variable. It's giving it a value of express. I want to call it node tunes. So I'm going to update the value here. And this should be updated in three places in the browser if I go back and refresh our home page. So if I refresh, the browser tab should say node tunes, the H1 should say node tunes, and the welcome to should also. So I'm going to refresh, and we can see it in all three places. I see it up here, see it H1. So if we want to pass data from a controller to a view, we can pass whatever data we want. We just pass it as a JSON object. And then we can use our handlebar syntax 
to display those server side views. Question for you. We can see the H1 and the paragraph tag that are visible in the browser. We can see them here on index.hbs. Yet we've also got our page title showing up here. Where would this be set? Because there is no, notice there's no like doc type or HTML or head tag or title. None of that stuff is in our index.hbs view. You got it. Thanks, Bugra. So inside of views, we've also got a layout template. Aha. And in here, we've, here we've got our doc type. So the page title gets set up here. We've also got a link to our style sheet and then our body, our individual view body gets injected here. So let's try adding some stuff here. Um, first of all, well, maybe we'll just put on a little more content on the home page. We'll start nice and simple with some basic HTML. Um, we're building this site with Node, Express, and MongoDB, um, 68 fall 2021 at Georgian College. So I'm just putting on a little description of our site. If I go back and, oops, reload. So whatever HTML we put in the view is going to show up. Let's try adding a new view. Um, let's see, what do we want to build here? Um, what page do we want? Let me think for a second. Um, okay. Let's go to our controllers and let's we're going to create an about method and view. So we'll use our router.get and the URL will be slash about. And again, we'll use our typical request response callback. So what should we do when we get a request at localhost 3000 slash about? So if a request comes in, then the URL will be HTTP, HTTP localhost 3000 slash about. So what should happen on line 11? Yeah, exactly, Adam. So let's call res.render, and then in quotes about, we don't need the file extension. We've already set up in app.js that all our views are using HBS. Okay, so let's just try the code this way. When a request comes in at slash about, we want to render a view called about. So what will happen if we try this URL now? What do you expect should happen? Yeah, it will give an error. How come it will give an error? You got it, Chris, because we're calling a view that we haven't built yet. Pretty descriptive error. It failed to look up the view called about inside of the views directory. Okay, so that 
is to be expected. So to fix this error, right, we're going to want to create inside of views, we're going to want to create an about.hbs file, as Adam said. So this is fairly similar to what we did in .NET, right? Build a new method in the controller that calls a view, and then go build a view with the same name. So let's try that. So I'll right click on views. I'm going to create, I'm just going to pick new file. And I will call it about.hbs. We need to specify the extension. My code editor is not smart enough to know I want an HBS file. So the new file, put it in the chat, call it about.hbs. So we'll put on here about this site. Um, and then maybe I'll put on, okay, well, actually, let's just try it like this. So first we'll try it with just this H1 tag. The error should go away saying that the about view doesn't exist because quite clearly it does exist now. And now when I refresh, we get about this site showing up. Now, notice though, what happened to our page title? Okay. On the home page, it says node tunes, but on about, it just shows the URL. What should we do to get the page title? It's actually, it is using the layout. It uses the layout by default for all the views. But how come the home page has a descriptive page title, but about doesn't? Let's go look at the index controller. Right, in the render method up here on line six, we're passing in this JSON object, which includes a variable called title. And our layout will render this title variable if we have one. In our about method, we are calling the view, and this works, but we're never passing in this optional JSON object. So if we want the page title to show up, we can add if we add this optional parameter, this should then give us a page title as well. So now if I refresh, now we've got a page title. So if the layout doesn't have this variable, it just sort of ignores it. Any questions so far? This is probably not all that different from what we did in ASP.NET. but it's a little different. It is, Adam. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, we do have to do, it's more hands-on, but we have to do a little more manually. In ASP, Visual Studio kind of automates more stuff, which saves us time, but we also maybe don't have as much control or understanding of what's happening. Okay, so we've got home and about. Um, let's do this. Let's add um, to our layout, let's add bootstrap. Okay. So I'm gonna go to get bootstrap.com 
I'll put the link in the chat for you. So it actually, we could install with NPM if you want to install it locally, we could. Um, or we can just use the uh, CDN, I think. Did they get rid of our CDN? Okay, yeah, so we can copy this. So I'm just gonna copy the, I put the link in the chat. I'm gonna copy the CDN. And in our layout file before our own style sheet, I'm just gonna paste in my link to Bootstrap. So now if I go here, we notice the font changes, for example, because it's using Bootstrap. Now we can customize our own things. Maybe we want to get our own font. We don't want to use the default font that's here. So we could go get a Google font and add that in as well. Um, pick any, let's see, pick any font you like for our music library. Maybe I'll use uh, this one. I'll use the, uh, no, that's too much. I'll use the Nanito font. I'll click on this. And uh, I'll select this style. And again, it gives me a link. So I'm going to copy that link. I'll put it in the chat. So we'll add our I should probably be putting in this. So there's our Google font. Bootstrap. And then in our style sheet, it just wants me to specify that the font family is Nunito sans serif. So I can open up the style sheet that's here in public and style sheets. I'm going to change this to Nunito to use my Google font. Yeah. So let's see now. So now I get a different font, but it's global. So now I got this kind of funky Nunito font on all our views, even on the users. Okay, well, that one doesn't use a view. It just doesn't render a view. This is kind of a funky font we've got. So we've added a new view. We've added a new method. Um, let's go back and add a couple other things, a couple other values to our about. Right, so we've got a page title, but this time we also want to pass some content, let's say, from the controller to the view and render it here. So I'm going to go back to our index controller. And if I'm going too fast, if you need me to redo anything, just let me know. Okay. So we can pass in a title, but I'm also going to pass in I'll break this up into a new line, passing in a title, but I'm also going to pass in some content. This is um, info 
about our music library. So now when we're rendering the about view, we've got two variables in our JSON object. We've got title, but we also have content. So we can render this content in the about view. Maybe we want to put it in a paragraph tag using our handlebar syntax. Jillian, I think CSS is especially fun when we can just use someone else's. Okay, so I've added in here, I've added a second value to this JSON object. I've added a comma after the title value, created a content variable, and given it a value, a text value as well. Yes. Exactly. So now I can put in a P tag. And what would we need to do to now output that message here on line two inside the paragraph tag? Thank you, Chris. So just our handlebars and you can put spaces in, you don't need to. I find it is often a little more readable with the spaces. So we're rendering our server side value variable of content Okay, so our controller creates and populates this variable in the JSON object, and then our view, we can render it using those handlebars. Okay, the next thing what we wanna do with this is build, add a simple bootstrap navigation bar so that we can move between the home page and the about page. So we've got two different routes here in our index controller. So we've got a nav bar that I've actually put up on Blackboard for you. We may need to change it a bit. In the lesson four folder, you'll see here is a sample nav bar. So we can copy that code from Blackboard. I'm gonna to go to my layout file. Where should we put it here? Where do we want the nav bar to appear? Yeah, so inside the body, but above the page content. So basically, after line 14, I'm going to paste in, and I've included, so I got this from W3 Schools. This is the Bootstrap 4 nav bar. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to come out. We may have to go and get a new one, but we'll try it out. Um, Oops, I think I've already got, yeah, I've got two body tags. Um, whoops, sorry, so I'm going to take that one out. Okay, why does it have, excellent question, Chris. In this case, let's go, let's go look. Let's look at the documentation. Well, their documentation isn't very good, is it? So we're using the double. Chris, it's a good question. I don't have a good answer for you yet. 
Let me get back to you with that question next week. Okay? I don't have a good answer for it. So bear with me on that one. So now, cool, we get this little nav bar here. And when we click on it, you can see it, you can see the links that are here, right? So the link that says Comp 2068 site, it just calls the root path. So that'll go to the index method, take us home. The link that I put here goes to slash about. It's cool. This one doesn't go anywhere yet. And register and log in. We'll make those active later on in the course, but not yet. We can also change this instead of saying Comp 2068 site. Let's change that. Say node tunes. Now we're going to do one more thing with this and then I think we're going to call it a day. So we've looked at building a new page, right? We've built this about view with a corresponding about method handled in our controller. So when we get a request at localhost slash about, it renders our view. We set up the title variable and content variable. We've created an HBS file and it renders these things. So we can, we could put all the methods in our one controller, but normally, just like in ASP.NET, we'll build separate controllers for managing different parts of our application. So for example, if we want to have, let's say, albums, artists, and songs, we'll probably want three controllers in the application. And we'll then need to map in app.js, we'll need to map each of these URLs. So any requests that start with albums are handled by an albums controller. So let's go ahead and set that up now. So we're gonna make a new controller. So inside of your controllers folder, let's right click and make a new JavaScript file uh, let's call this one artists. And normally, just like in ASP.NET, the controller names tend to be plural, although we don't use the word controller in the file names like we do in ASP.NET. So the controller file is just going to be called artists.js. We're going to require express and we're going to instantiate an express router and parse and direct URL requests. So this is the same code in the auto generated controllers. Oops. So I could have just copied these two lines from either the user's controller or the index controller. Same two lines, I've just used let rather than var. So now we use router.get. So at the root of this controller, we'll add our callback and in this case we're going to call res.render artists slash index. So we're going to make a new index view and again this is kind of similar to .NET. We already have an index view in the root but we're going to make an artists folder inside of views and put it in there. We're also going to make this file public. Oh, 
by exporting the router. So here, this will be artist slash artist path. So this eventually will display a list of artists, but not today. We'll start on that next week when we start integrating MongoDB and connecting up to a database. So we've created this controller and when we get requests, I know we're almost at one o'clock, we're only gonna be a few more minutes and then we're actually gonna wrap up for the day. So just bear with me for another five minutes or so. So we have to do three things to make this work. We've done one, we've built the controller. What are the other two things we need to do to make this URL of HTTP localhost 3000 slash artists. If I try to run this URL right now, I don't expect good things. So how come I got a not found error? Notice this is different than the message. It doesn't say the view doesn't exist. Why is this URL, why does it generate a 404 not found? You can see when we call get artists in the console. Okay, so we do. Okay, so Adam, let's go ahead and do that. So inside of views, we absolutely will need that. We're going to create a new directory inside called artists. But this is very much the same structure we would have used with ASP.NET. And now in here, we'll make a new file, as Adam suggested, called index.hps. And just put on a heading that says artists. So now the control the controller's rendering artists index inside of views, and we've now created artists index. Okay. We created the controller with a method, the method calls a view, and now we've built that view. So let's go. Let's try again. Now, our 404 is still here. How come? Why is this showing and not found when the view that we needed, it's here now? Aha! It doesn't know this controller is here, but it's not connected to anything. Right, in ASP.NET, this would happen automatically. The server would just read the URL and direct it to the artist controller. As Chris said, we need to handle that mapping manually in our app.js. So the first thing we're gonna do on line nine you can call it router or controller, is we need to make a reference to our artist file. So we're going to add line nine. We're setting a variable equal to our new controller. So line nine is new. And now on line 25, we are mapping any requests that start with slash artists. We're telling the app, if the URL starts with slash artist, send the request to this con the artist's controller. This should fix our 404. And now when I refresh, now it's working. So I'll leave my code window up for a minute. So you need lines nine and 25. 
highlighted the whole section. You need the first line I've highlighted and the last line. And we're going to make one other tiny change, and then we're going to call it a day. The last thing we want to do with this, we have this link in our nav bar that says something that doesn't go anywhere. Let's rename that link from something to artists and we'll enable it. So when a user clicks on artists, they get taken here. So we're going to go to the layout file. And down on my line 33, I have this link that doesn't go anywhere and it says something. I'm going to change that link so it says artists and the href attribute should be slash artists. So now we have a way to get to the home page of the artist section of the website. Okay, so I've changed this link here. So now we have our controller, we have our view, and we have a way to get there through our nav bar. So now when I go home, I now have an about link that calls the method within the index controller, but I also have an artist link that calls the index method of the new artists controller. Um, so what we've done here using the express generator, you basically have everything you need to do your portfolio. Now you're going to use the express generator to make a new site for yourself. And then you can simply, you can either create a new controller or you can just create methods in the index controller. And then you're going to create some views that are rendered by the different paths. So you can start to describe yourself, your background, your skills, and show your work. I think we'll actually wait to do the publishing to Heroku next week. We will do that in class next week. We've covered a fair amount today. I don't wanna beat you guys up too badly. So the last thing I will do is grab my git ignore copy it into the folder, and then I can publish all of this to GitHub. So I'm going to go to my earlier file. I'll copy my git ignore and paste it in here. And then I can initialize git and push my code. So this will be our music library setup. So I will go to GitHub and create a new repository for this. And then we'll keep working in this same repository. This will be our music, fall 21. Node Express, MongoDB, Music Library. Simon, we will use Angular later on in the semester. So we're going to rebuild this app and replace the HPS templates with a single page Angular template. So we will do an example of that later in the course. Lessons 10, 11, 12, I believe. If you want to experiment with it in your portfolio, you can teach yourself React Viewer Angular for bonus marks, which I've had students do in the past. Okay, so all our code is here. 
I will upload the videos later on. Um, if you've been able to follow along and get your app working, you're free to go. Um, there is no quiz or lab this week just to get started on your portfolio assignment. So next week, we will look at MongoDB. We'll start adding a database component to our music library. We'll talk about NoSQL databases. We'll connect Node up. And we'll also look at deploying this to the Heroku cloud service from GitHub, much like we deployed from GitHub to Azure in ASP.NET. Okay, if you have questions or need some help, I can stay in the WebEx room for a little while. And if not, then um, go get off your computers for a little while. Go get some sun. <laughs> and I'll see you next week. Yes, you too, Keneal. Have a great week.